Hi, I'm Bob Nishenzi, CEO of Supermed, and you are watching Eye on Business. Welcome, I'm Kevin McDonald, and you're watching Ion Business Innovation. And today with me is Kevin Strom with Globe Chat. Globe Chat happens to be the winner of the Tech Coast Angel Celebration of Entrepreneurship, which happened here last week. And with us today is going to be the CEO and founder. And I really appreciate your coming in. My pleasure. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about what it's like to win a Tech Coast Angels Entrepreneurship Award? It's actually an honor. Um, there was 120 companies that actually entered into it, and they were pre-screened. And to be selected among such amazing other companies is, is an extreme honor. It was an incredible night for us, and we went out and celebrated afterwards and went back home and went back to work. Yeah, and that, that celebration, I'm guessing, lasted about five minutes in a startup and then uh, went right back to work yep. again, huh? Yeah, we're always focused on improving. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about what GlobeChat does. So what GlobeChat does is it gives you the ability to send a message on your mobile device in English to 40 different people in 40 different countries. Each of them will see it in their own language instantly. So um, we basically... Uh, made it simple for you to communicate with anyone on the planet. So mm -hmm. for example, if you wanted to send a message to someone right now in Paris, you send them a message and they would see it in French. You send it to someone in Germany, they see it in German. So we made it very simple to communicate with people around the planet. That's pretty mind blowing. I can tell you we provide help desk services and technology. And one of the things we tend to do is use Google translation engines to, to, to it's do painful. that. And it's, well, it's painful. I, and my expensive heart goes out to you. <laughs> it's yeah. expensive for the client, too. So yeah. uh, I can't wait to see this technology in real time. Um, is it being offered now commercially? Uh, April 1st, okay. 2016, it will be available on the App Store uh, for Apple, uh, Android, Windows. And we also have a computerized version as well because we want to connect with people even maybe in a small village in Africa. Maybe they just have one computer. They don't have cell phones. Mm -hmm. We want to make it available to everyone in the world in some format. That's very cool. So what is the financial model? How do you bill for the service? Uh, we're not charging anything. It's really? free, okay. uh, which normally people would say that's not a really good financial model because the ROI, if it's free, you get nothing back. Uh, what we want to do is create a, a large user base right off the ba uh, right off the bat. And if you charge for an app, you're going to lose 80% of the population. So when you launch an app, you want to make sure it's free. And we want to make sure that people can connect. Now, down the road, we will probably charge $0.99 cents or $1.99 per year. And if we have a billion users like WhatsApp has, every $0.99 cents equates to a billion dollars of revenue per yeah, year. Yeah, and I think that those that support Facebook would be... Um, reticent to say that free services don't pay, right? So yes. um, well, you get enough user base and it ultimately pays. And that's, that's yep. a great, free, great idea. Free service does pay if you have a larger company that's willing to pay for that company that doesn't make any revenue but has a large user base. So it's a fantastic idea, but it's kind of random. Where did you come up with the concept of doing translation? Was it something that you've been frustrated by? Somebody you know? I mean, what, what drew you to doing this particular technology? I, I love travel. Um, it's one of my favorite hobbies. I love meeting new people and I love learning about new cultures because generally in social media you communicate with people within your own culture but mm -hmm. it, you learn so much more when you sit down in a coffee shop in just a remote village and talk to people. It's, it's so fascinating. Um, so when I travel I notice that when I came back there's these people that I, I still want to keep in touch with but you lose track of them because like you said Google Translate. Mm -hmm. You cut, you paste. 
eventually you get really busy with your life, you start moving on to other things, and you lose track of these people that you had some sort of a connection with. So we just wanted to make it nice and simple. When you meet someone on a trip, you know, um, you can communicate with them. You send them a message. You can even do voice to text. You could want to send a message to a new friend in Italy, and you're driving in your car. You can talk into your phone, hit send. And they will get it in Italian on their phone instantly. So for me, it was just a way to connect the world. I just realized that no one has made it very simple. It's tough to cut and paste. Wow. It, it, we just wanted to make it extremely simple for everybody. Well, it sounds like a really fabulous technology. Let me ask you a little bit about the company structure. So are you... Currently, do you have investors? I know that this was a TechCoast uh, Angels event, so I, I believe you got some benefit. What was the prize right. that you got out of the TechCoast Angels event? Uh, we actually, I'm honored to say we got two prizes. Uh, okay. We won the number one company, best company overall. So we got a $20,000 prize for that. Okay. Um, we also uh, won the audience favorite, which um, I, I, that award makes me very happy because it, you know I guess we connected with the audience as mm -hmm. well. Uh, for that, we got an office space in Newport Beach for a full year. Right. So, yeah, so we have a second office now. Yeah, well, what are you going to do when you have to go back to, to the cheat? No, I'm kidding. It's, it's funny. Maybe you guys will make do with so well you'll be able to stay in Newport. That would be really great. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't mind. We we have a really nice office down at San Juan Capistrano. We love the traffic down mm -hmm. in South Orange County. Mm -hmm. So Newport's not too bad. So as long as we go during non-traffic hours, we just have another place to hang out if we're waiting for traffic to go by. So while we have a minute, tell me a little bit about your team. What does it take to do what you're doing? Most people in the general public see the hard results of many years of work, but they really don't understand how you get there. So tell me a little bit about your team yep. and a little bit about your journey. Yeah, it, it's actually taken us five years. Um, it, there is a lot that see, has gone into it's not into overnight, this. five years. It's, it is five years. I mean, it's crazy. Um, so uh, we have 30 programmers and developers, um, and the, the amount of program that's gone into it, the, the reason why we want it so complicated on the back end is because we want to make it very simple on the front end. Mm -hmm. and, the, and we have just created this, this network with these 30 programmers and developers. We've been, we're on the phone with them sometimes till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and we just, you know, they're part of us now. We've, a lot of them we haven't even met. They're overseas, right, and yet right. they feel like family. So it's, it's been an extremely long journey, but right now it's, it's very rewarding because um, when you work hard for five years and finally you get a chance to, to celebrate and go up on stage and talk about what you've created, it's so much more rewarding when you know how much has gone into getting to that point. Yeah, I could see where that would be a, a pretty great thing to do. Um, in the minute that we have left, where do we expect to see Globe Chat in the next 12 months? Well, uh, we are launching on April 1st. Our goal is to get people on from all over the world. We have interns uh, from different countries that are going to be promoting it. We've spoken with the United Nations. We spoke with the State Department. There's a lot of people that are very excited about it. So in the next 12 months, we are just going to try and get as many people around the world uh, on board with it. Um, if anyone wants to see and track it, uh, we're on Facebook. Um, okay. You know, we, we like to stay up on other social media, even though we are a social media company ourselves. Makes sense completely. Um, so if you go to Globe Chat on Facebook, you can just track to see where we are at. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you. Thank you for being an innovator. We need more entrepreneurs today. I can assure you I will be using this. I'll be telling my team about it as soon as I get back to the office. I'm Kevin McDonald. This has been an episode of Ion Business Innovation, and thanks for watching. We have our first customer. Hi, I'm Kirsten Mangers. I'm Managing Director of Chick Labs, and you're watching Ion Business. I'm Chris Placell, founder of Red Knight Consulting, and you are watching Ion Business. I'm Kevin McDonald, and you're watching Ion Business, and with me today is Chris Placell with Red Knight Consulting. Red Knight Consulting is an organization that takes businesses from prem or what is called on location prem to the cloud. Welcome to Ion Business. Thanks Thank for having coming. me. So Chris, um, the cloud is a big deal and I know that I've actually heard this in the public so people think it's truly in the cloud. So mm -hmm. why don't you explain for the public a little bit what cloud means? Sure, uh, when, when people are talking about cloud in an infrastructure uh, sense, what that means is businesses are getting out of owning and managing servers inside of their corporate headquarters or data centers. Um, you know, the traditional model is you would buy servers and buy infrastructure like switches and routers, buy internet connectivity and firewalls, and then you'd have to own, manage, and run that equipment. So the concept with cloud is put that stuff in somebody else's bucket to manage, 
and concentrate on focus on running your actual business and focus on what you're the best in the world at and let somebody else who's really good at managing the IT infrastructure manage that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm still, what, I, what I'd like to do is to break down what, what is cloud in particular. So to the point that he just made, uh, infrastructure to the person that may not understand that is the computers at your local location that provide services out to your community or your users, right? Mm -hmm. And then instead of having that in a building local to you or in a co-location facility that you own the, the equipment and may share what's called rented space or hosted space, you're actually going into a cloud service provider where they provide all of that infrastructure for you, correct? That's mm -hmm. what you're yep, talking about. absolutely. So from that perspective, um, there's, there's a lot of debate, and I, I'm not here to be confrontational today, but I do want to get into some of the arguments about regulatory compliance and, mm -hmm. and some of the challenges of being yep. in cloud. So uh, why don't you provide me with your view on what the benefit of going to the cloud is? Yeah, there's several different models and providers, but what's kind of generally happening in the industry is there's an overall consolidation going on. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is customers are kind of being attracted to the big three providers. And those today, as of today, are Amazon Web Services, mm -hmm. Microsoft, Azure, and Office 365, and uh, the Google Cloud. And those providers are meeting a lot of those um, compliance and regulatory needs at a, at a global level, even to the point where very large government agencies are feeling comfortable migrating and dipping their toes into uh, putting some of their servers in, in that space. Um, there's an overall uh, trend in the industry to, uh, for new businesses to just start in the cloud, and we deem those companies born in the cloud. And you think about if you were going to start a new company today from scratch and didn't have anything, uh, uh, any ball and chain anchor to carry with you, you would just natively start in the cloud. You'd open a Google email account or maybe a Microsoft Office 365 account, and you'd start from there. And what's happening is the larger corporate companies that have historically had on-site infrastructure and data and services to manage now have to compete with this lower barrier to entry. Well, those larger companies may or may not be doing security well, they may or may not be even thinking about backups or disaster recovery uh, or who's going to change out the hard drive when it breaks. Um, but these global uh, cloud companies like the Amazons and Microsofts have armies of people that are doing that. And if you talk about very specifically security, there's compliance and regulatory by industry. In healthcare, you have HIPAA. Uh, if you're taking credit cards, you're PCI. Um, there's financial services and regulatory things. And these large companies meet all of these global compliance um, SOCs and um, uh, HIPAA and PCI are kind of the big ones. They already meet all these regulatory and compliance um, uh, minimums. So well, that's where I would argue they don't. Um, they claim they're compliant. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a, HIPAA, a certified HIPAA expert. Sure. And that's what I do sure. for a living. So um, I, I'm not saying you're misleading. I'm yeah. saying they are. But yeah. they, if you it's see shared... the word compliant, let me just clarify. Yeah. If you yeah. see the word we are HIPAA compliant, yeah. uh, the U.S. government's Department of Health and Human Services has stated no one is HIPAA compliant unless they say they are. So for someone to put a moniker that says we're HIPAA compliant. Now to say that we follow the HIPAA procedures to the degree that we can, mm -hmm. that's another story. Yep. I do agree with you to a degree, and this is one of the subjects I've written extensively on, so that's why it's a great subject for me. Yeah. Um, I do agree that for the average small company, there's no question that the cloud is probably the best place to start. Mm -hmm. Whether you stay there or not is another issue. It also depends on whether you have the coinciding policies and procedures on the local end mm -hmm. that extend out. Where the mistake is, is people think just because I put it into the cloud, somehow I, I'm compliant yeah. or I'm now you know, able to not have to follow these regulations. And that is woefully um, inaccurate and, and significantly a challenge for people. So it sounds like you have a good model. So tell me just a little bit about some examples of the type of company that you push up into the cloud. Yeah, so we recently worked with a small business in Irvine. They had about 25 employees. Um, and they had on-premise uh, infrastructure that was aging six, seven-year-old servers and, and hardware, and they didn't even have a full-time IT guy. And we migrated them vir to virtual desktops in the cloud and virtual, and took the, all the applications that were running, all their data, and moved them. In this particular case, uh, we, we helped them select the best provider, and for them it was Amazon. We moved them to the Amazon cloud um, and helped them migrate it, and we did it over a weekend. So basically everybody went home on a Friday, and Monday morning they came in and, and were all completely virtualized. And to the end user, they don't really see a difference. Right. Um, but to the, to the company, now there's you know, multiple servers that are backing up everything, power redundancy. Mm -hmm. And the, the trigger for them was they had had a power outage and a power supply had failed in one of these servers, and they were forced to go to eBay to find a replacement power supply because the, the equipment was so old. Right. And a lot of companies, I mean, there's several triggers for us when we're talking to companies. Usually they're having some sort of major outage. They've lost power, lost a piece of equipment. They're growing geographically. They're adding an office or moving. 
I mean, if you think about it, if you've got a server room full of equipment on your site and you're going to relocate, you've got to move all that stuff around. Um, and if it's in the cloud, you just move and connect up as long as you have internet. Um, and the other thing is, you know, uh, somebody's not sleeping well at night, either uh, an executive in the company, a CFO or controller. Is, you know, I know we're probably doing backups, but we've never tested it. I don't know how it works. And if this building burned down, I'm not sure we could keep running. Yeah, I think that's another point, too, on the cloud stuff is be very careful um, for the public. And he's right. They do provide cloud services, but you have to make sure you actually pay for them because a lot of people assume they get it as part of being mm -hmm. in the cloud, and it's just not true. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that you need to be careful of is not having logging. I'm in the middle of a breach investigation right now where one of the major providers who there may be legal action, so I don't say the name, but one of the major providers was unable to provide any information on what happened mm -hmm. when there was an attack on one of the servers. And they said, well, that's not our obligation. Mm -hmm. We just give you the space. It's up to you right. to make sure you're gathering this information. So my point is, is that just because you put it into the cloud doesn't make it just go away. Um, for the small business, I think it's a really good model. We do this hybrid also. Mm -hmm. We do both mm -hmm. cloud and hybrid. Hybrid is a mix. Some of the stuff is local and some of the stuff is up in the cloud and um, it allows you to do the things that need nearline high-end processing like video mm -hmm. and artwork and some of the stuff that takes uh, more, more localized processing. Um, now, from the perspective of the future, we all know cloud's where it's going. So mm -hmm. where, are you, where do you see yourself as a business in five years? Yeah, so we are um, not going to be building our own data centers. We're not going to be um, selling on-premise equipment. We are 100% focused on just knowing the top providers that are out there, mm -hmm. how to interact with them, and how to come in and consult with a business and talk to them about what's best for them, and knowing the difference between why someone would go to an Amazon or a Microsoft or a Google, what are the applications, the locations, the countries they need to do business in, their security requirements, um, and, and uh, basically working as a managed service provider to be that geek translator between the business and the technologies that are out there uh, in the field, and then on an ongoing basis, provide support um, for the end users and the server. So watching, uh, monitoring of the infrastructure. Um, we had an issue uh, just last uh, uh, last week where customer's uh, uh, database server was 96% full on the hard drive. We got an alert, we fixed it, customer didn't even know what happened, right? Um, so that's another example of it's in the cloud, but still having a good professional monitoring services like we provide, same thing. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that people are actually watching over it because just because it is being, uh, let's call it the freeways being managed, doesn't mean the cars are being tuned up and, mm -hmm. and, and controlled. The other thing I think that's important not to miss is the international regulatory um, bodies. The European Union, for example, mm -hmm. has much more strict privacy regulations mm -hmm. than the US. So if you can cloud provide services to a European company or a European unit of an American company, for example, that's better because you're not pulling it into the U.S. and then having to upgrade everything around what those European requirements are. Mm -hmm. So I could see where the cloud would be a good fit there. Yeah. Well, I really want to thank you for coming in. It's been great. Thanks is there any me. message you want to provide to the audience? Yeah, I think uh, the key to all this is really uh, it, it's not if you're going to go to the cloud, uh, it's when. In the long run, companies are not in the business of buying, owning, and managing infrastructure on site. So uh, to consider the cloud. Consider it now might not be the right time, but it will come in the near future. And be educated about what options are out there. Appreciate that very much. And yeah. with that said, you've been watching Chris Placell. My name is Kevin McDonald, and you're watching Ion Business.